Hey, what's up, Yash Sports? Been a while, hasn't it? I, uh, I've been really busy with school and stuff, so I apologize for not posting a video in a long time. It's, uh, it's one of those things that weighs heavy on me just because of the fact that, um, as a director, I strive to, you know, try to put out at least a video every two weeks, and it's been a couple of months now. And the reason why I haven't had a chance to put out any videos is because, you know, school, I've been really, really busy with school. Uh, I'm in my senior year at, uh, in college. And, uh, and I'll be graduating in December with my bachelor's degree in history. And actually, I'm at the same time right now, uh, as, I'm, as I'm saying this, I'm taking a break from working on some uh, master's application that I'm working on. So I'm looking in the spring of 2013 uh, and entering my, my master's program. So uh, hopefully by, I guess, 2015, I'll have a master's degree in history and I'll be able to teach at a college level, which is uh, it's a goal of mine. I'd love to be able to teach history at a college level. It's just one of those things that... Um, over the course of the last couple of years, I, I've become more aware of, of what it is that I want to do with myself in my life and uh, where I want my life to uh, to go. So, that being said, uh, that's what's been going on with me. And I, like I said, I apologize, especially to Baif. Uh He's doing a great job running this channel, and I feel bad that uh, being one of the directors, I have been neglecting my duties as a director um, and my duties, and my obligation to you guys to bring you guys content, you know, keep you guys entertained out there who who want to see uh, content from us directors. So uh, I'm going to strive to put out more videos, and hopefully they're not going to be marathon videos like this. Um, this one's pretty long. I didn't really intend that, you know, like when you get into a pitching, uh, when you get a pitcher in, in Road to the Show, you kind of expect to throw like, I don't know, six innings, something like that, and then suddenly six turn to seven, and sometimes you pitch a whole, you know, complete game. Um, and that's not the case here. This is not a, this is not a complete game for me, uh, but it is quite a long, long game, and it was a really good one. I actually did two, I recorded two games this one day. I recorded one live, and I totally got my ass kicked, and, uh, and I said, you know what, I got to I gotta try that again because I think I lost like four innings and I gave up like nine runs or something. So I said, you know what? Let's come back when my pitcher's feeling a little bit better, and we'll go from there. So, first things first, I want to mention that uh, I have uh, been debafed. I don't know if you guys remember, but the last video I put out, which is probably a couple months ago now, uh, I had mentioned that I had been baffed. My two players that I had making, been making videos about, Charles Ward and Tony Miller had found their their way via the computer onto the Colorado Rockies and if you know from watching base videos he talks about being you know having all of his players traded to the White Sox which is the team he seems to keep playing as so when I when that happened to me when I got traded to the Rockies when Tony Miller got traded to the Rockies I should say uh, I said I got baffed and so I made that video about it so I've been debaffed Tony Miller was traded from the Rockies to the Tigers yes <laughs> So, Charles Ward still in the Rockies. Tony Miller is now with the Tigers, and I've got my other player, Scott McLean, who's been sort of my staple road to the show player for the last two years. Uh, he's with the Mets and still in Double A. Actually, no, he got brought up to Triple A. Take that back. So you got one Major League player and two Triple A players. So, anyways, uh, that's out of the way. What I want to do is I kind of want to tell you guys a story, and um, it's a story that's long overdue. And I mentioned it in, let's see here, I was gone from December 27th to January 17th. I was overseas. I was in Europe. And I intended on, and I still need to do this for my own channel too, I intended on making these, these videos. Like, here, this is my trip. I don't tell you guys all about it because for me, it was my first time overseas. I'd not, I've never been overseas before. I've been to Mexico and I've been to Canada. Um, so I, I've been, quote, international, but I've never really left the continent. So going over to uh, Europe is a big deal, and I mentioned that I was going to be going to Poland, Budapest, or Poland, Hungary, and Ukraine, and someone was like, why the hell are you going to Eastern Europe? And so finally, here we are in May, the last day of May, I'm getting around to finally telling you guys why and, and a little bit about my story. So to backtrack, uh, a friend of mine, Elizabeth, she's in the Peace Corps, and she's stationed in Ukraine, in western Ukraine, this tiny little town. And so she told me a couple of times that she wishes and she hoped that people would come visit her overseas, you know, see the places that where she's at, see the things that she's doing firsthand, because she can only explain to us only so much via her blogs or pictures 
uh, when she gets a chance to put them up on, say, like Facebook and stuff. So uh, I had gotten this really nice tax return. It was um, early uh, 2011. And so I, I had been talking to her about it. I just kind of like, okay, I'll start saving up, you know? And so I bought a plane ticket. I just, it was sort of an impulse buy. I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm just going to buy the ticket now and I'm going to go. And I'm going to make sure that I go by December. And that's what I did. Uh, it was about, I guess, about this time last year that I bought my plane ticket. And, uh, and I decided I wasn't sure if I should go for two weeks or three weeks or a month. You know, I was really kind of like working out the details with her. And we figured uh, three weeks was probably the best option, you know. So I did that. We, I booked a flight for three weeks. And um, the first flight that I wanted, it was this, uh, it, it provided me with a three hour layover in Paris. And uh, I wanted, or not, a 20, 22 hour layover in Paris. And that's the one I wanted because I wanted to be um, on, you know, I wanted to be in France and I wanted to go into Paris and I wanted to see the sights and, and spend some time there. Uh, but I opted not to do that and I, I, I settled for a three hour layover. So. Uh, anyway, so I got that, uh, and I was, I, you know, I had to get my passport, which is a, a process in itself. It's a very simple process, but it's kind of a nerve-wracking thing because you're trying to get this official document. You got to do, this, you know, it's kind of expensive. And so, anyways, I got that, and I got a travel backpack, and I started collecting all this stuff. And I'm from Southern California. I'm from San Diego. I have no idea what it's like to live in a snowy environment. So I enlisted my subscribers, and I and I did a commentary. I'm like, hey, look, I need your help. You know, tell them I'm, I'm from San Diego. You know, I visit the snow. I don't. It doesn't snow here, so I don't know what it's like to live in a snowy environment. And so I, I got a lot of really good advice, and I and I got links to great places to go. And it was uh, it, it, it helped me out a lot. And that's what's really cool about about YouTube stuff is you can go out there and you could uh, put a put a video out there and, and someone will be like, oh hey yeah, you don't need to do this, you don't need to buy this. Here's some non name brand stuff that's not going to cost you a lot of money, but it's going to do, do the job just the same. And so I really was able to make my uh, put my trip um, fit into my budget more easily thanks to uh, the insider information. So. <clears throat> But uh, anyway, so that's a good that's a good backdrop. But the funny thing, like I said, I've never this was the first time I've ever traveled internationally before. So I was nervous as all hell. I asked my parents if uh, I don't live with my parents, but um, I didn't have anyone else to help me out. So I called my parents. And I was like, Hey, look, I'm gonna be doing this. Would you be able to do me a favor and drive me to LAX? And uh, they're like, Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, no problem. And so they take me to LAX, and the funny thing is, is that my both my younger brother, my younger brother, and my older brother, have uh, been in the military. Um, my older brother was in the Air Force, but uh, he stayed around the area. My younger brother was in the Navy, and he's been all over the world. And so I'd never seen my mom get upset about uh, anything, uh, anybody leaving. You know, she, she'll, you know, she's probably upset, but she's not openly upset. So when they dropped me off at LAX, my mom was really shaken up and crying and stuff. And I was just like, comforting her. And I was just like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And, and she just was just, she just was so um, upset by the whole thing. I don't, she's got a fear of flying. So I don't know if that was like, you know, she thought she was saying goodbye to me and like my plane might crash or whatever. But I assured her that uh, I was going to get there safely and I'd call her the second I landed. And I did. And um, she was wide awake too. I can't remember what time it was. It was some. It was. It was a ten-hour flight, and I left. So I must have landed like eleven or twelve o'clock the next day. So it would have probably been like I don't know, sometime in the morning. I don't know. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm not gonna. Should have figured it out before I did this commentary. But so you know, I gave her a big hug. Told her I loved her. The whole thing. You know, shook my dad's hand. My dad said he was pretty proud that uh, I had set this goal for myself and then I was doing it. And then, to be honest, I was really proud of myself too because I I always have set goals for myself and then what would happen is I would get frustrated, impatient with my goal, and then I would stop. And this time around, I couldn't do that because I had a plane ticket already purchased. I was like, boom, I'm going. So plane tickets purchased. I don't have any other option but to go. So I couldn't get impatient with it. So it was a really hard year because I was taking all the money that I was making as a delivery driver in tips and stuff, and I was putting them into a savings account, and I was saving them every freaking chance I could get. And I was able to travel on other people's dime. You know, people 
gave me money and tips, and then that's what paid for my entire trip. And I think it cost me only a couple of grand. I mean, the, the airfare itself was the huge part. It was like 1100 for the airfare. I mean, it was off-season, too. I mean, I was leaving after December. Uh, I mean, you know, after Christmas, before New Year's. So I kind of hit that, like, r kind of off-season rush-ish area. So anyways, uh, so yeah, my dad was super proud of me, and I was nervous as hell. Went through airport security, you know, just... I, I have this glasses case. It's an Oakley's glasses case. And I... <laughs> Every time I go through the airport, I'm like, yeah, they're going to stop me because they think it, they're going to think it's a pipe bomb or something. Because it kind of looks like a, like a pipe bomb. It's long and just riveted. And it, just, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like a glasses case. But I go through security fine. And I don't want to really hang, you know, hang on that forever. Um, but one thing I found out the hard way is that I booked my flight through Delta. And when I went to Delta to check in, they're like, oh, you have to go to Air France. And I was like, what? what I booked my flight through Delta, and I didn't realize it was just because they're flying in Paris. And I found this out when I landed. Nobody but Air France flies into Paris, apparently. Like, there was nothing but Air France flights. So it was the whole, like, KLM, Delta, Air France, and KLM, like, I think, are one big happy partner or something. Uh, <laughs> but when I, when I went to Delta, I had to walk, like, a mile or so, maybe even longer, down LAX. Uh, to find the international terminal, I was just like man, that was insane. You know, I, I kind of wish I was paying more attention, but it was a rookie mistake. I'd never, like I said, never traveled before, so um, that was that was fine. But the weird thing is, is just like I've flown throughout the states. You know, I've been all over the place. Um, you're used to like English-speaking flight attendants and uh, captains and stuff like that. So when I was on this this Air France flight, it was crazy because the flight attendants were French. They spoke French and they spoke English. The captain was French and he spoke English. And so everything was French first, English second. And I was still in L.A. and like scratching my head like, what? What's going on? <laughs> and so um, I speak a little French. So I was able to use like a little French that I know to order stuff. And after a while, when I got tired, I was just like English from here on out, which was cool. Um, but it was like it was like a 10 hour flight. Oh, man. It was like the that would I'll tell you the most grueling part. Is the actual traveling part, the the airport stuff, the trains, the buses? Because I went on a really long bus ride. It was like an eight-hour bus ride, which which was horrible. Uh, eventually, down the road. But the hardest part is traveling. You're like cramp. I'm six foot three. You know, I'm six foot three. I think right now I probably weigh about two fifteen. So I'm not like a, a huge guy. I mean, I'm tall, but I'm not like you know big. Um, as far as like like a fat guy, you know. But being six foot three is terrible in airplanes, especially if you're not riding first class, because like coach, you're just like squished in there. Uh, so I endured a ten hour flight on lots of coke and um, lots of bathroom trips to like stretch my legs and stuff, because <laughs> I started to like make friends with the, the flight attendants in the back, because I was constantly getting up, to, like stretching my legs every couple of hours. Um, and uh, so anyways, when I landed in, in France, I was just like blown away by the airport. You know, first you got to like go through security, which was really weird. You go through security and you go through customs and then uh, you get back into the airport. Like I could walk, I could have walked out into France. Just like, boom, I'm here in Paris, you know, well, like 30 miles outside of Paris. But the point was just like, bam, I'm in France, you know. I was totally blown away when I landed. I was like, oh my God, the rest of the world is to my east. Like I could go to China and Russia and you could get to Africa like on, by land you know it totally blew my mind I just couldn't believe it. it's just like oh my god I could go the rest like you could just walk the Roman roads like all the way to the rest of the world it was such a mind-blowing experience I, I couldn't I steam to this day like I'm just having a hard time getting my head wrapped around it um, it's really an exciting feeling I mean it, it, it's one of those things where you if you haven't left the continent, you know, because if you think about our continent, you know, we've got Canada above the U.S. and we've got South America, you know, like Mexico and South America below us. We don't really have much diversity when it comes to, and I, and I mean that like uh, reserved. I don't mean to like offend, but I mean you've got you got Canadians above us, which are essentially culturally very similar, if not identical, to Americans, and then you got Mexicans below us, which have some similar, at least in my area have some similar similarities culturally uh, but then again it's a Spanish influence you know Spanish Indian influence and then you got South America which has Spanish influence uh, you know some Portuguese um, but as far as the diversity it's it's not like Europe you know you got Italians and French and Germans and 
Spanish and Portuguese and English, you know, and then there's Greek and all the Slavics, and then just it, it's just like you've got so many different cultures and languages, and, and the diversity is there, you know. Then you get Africa connected to that through the Middle East, you know, and suddenly you just, the whole world is there. So that's what I mean. So I was blown away, and then some of the stereotypes of traveling internationally hit me. I was waiting in line. Uh, before that, I actually walked up to a guy, uh, to an Air France guy, and I, on my boarding pass um, from uh, from Paris to Warsaw, because my final destination was in Warsaw, was where I was meeting my friends. Uh, didn't have a gate, didn't have time, so I walked up to this guy, he's like, excuse me, uh, where do I go? Where's m where's my, my gate? I don't know. Uh, where to go? And he goes, oh, you just go around this way, and he tells me perfect English, you know, just like, totally cool guy. And I'm like, oh, cool, thank you very much, and, you know, went on, went on along my way. And I was standing in line and to go through security, and this girl comes up, and uh, American girl, blonde hair, she walks right up to me, of all people, she walks up to me and says, do you speak French? <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, kind of, but probably not like the French you need, and why, what's going on? And she's like, well, this security guard won't let me through, because she had two carry-on baggage bags, and she said the security guard said that she had to check one, but somehow he didn't like she she speaks English he was speaking only French and so the um, I don't know how I don't know well, now that I think about it, I don't know how she got all that information from him but yeah he would refuse to speak English to her and she had like 15 minutes until she had to board her flight and so um, it was one of those things you always hear about you know the horror stories of traveling like they won't speak English to you they'll only speak their native languages um, and for the most part reflecting on the whole trip that's not necessarily true um, this guy was quite the exception to the rule but uh, it was sort of a dickish thing to do especially in an international terminal because you think that they would speak English one of the major languages in the world um, so yeah I hopefully she got on through her flight but uh, going through French security was kind of interesting because it wasn't like American security I mean it was similar but not exactly similar they were actually like going through my stuff you know it's like oh, looking through my backpack and stuff asking me questions and stuff uh, like where are you heading you know how long um, how long are you be gone you know thing, things like that it's kind of like oh, you know, is that in your business really but whatever I'm in their country <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you like when you get into that international terminal it's just this wide open place I think I'll put a picture up and it was just amazing just like what the hell you know and then the, all these shops they had all these wonderful shops around and it was just it would blew me away it was such an impressive facility and I've been through I don't know, several airports in the U.S. I'm not like an expert, like, traveler. Like, I've been around the block and stuff. Like, woo. But, uh, yeah, it was just one of those things. Where, like, wow, this is super cool. <laughs> um, and then uh, that's when I, I picked up some euros. I went to the ATM because I only had dollars. And I didn't want to exchange all my money because I wanted to wait until I got to Warsaw before I, cha you know, went through and exchanged my money for, um, oh, my gosh, what is it? I can't remember what Warsaw, the Zoltis. Yeah, Zoltis. Um so I got, I got some euros and I had a $10 bill and I had a 10 euro and I put them side by side and I'll put the picture up and I was just kind of like, whoa, this is so crazy, you know, it's just like suddenly, you, you just I don't know, there's things you just sort of do <laughs> and um, that's kind of what I did. And then I did something really weird. When I boarded my flight, uh, I was running on like no sleep by the way too. I just like couldn't barely sleep on the airplane uh, like 15 minutes at a time. Uh, but we boarded uh, from the tarmac, which was really weird because I'd never boarded from the tarmac before. And so it was this Air France flight to Warsaw, and I boarded it, and I was almost asleep by the time we got in airborne. Like, for me, usually I'm kind of like, okay, I got to wait till we get airborne, secure and stuff, and then we're, we go. But I was falling asleep, like, while I was sitting in the seat. It was so great because I didn't have anybody to, <laughs> anybody to my left, you know. It was wide open, so I, like, spread out, and, uh, and I woke up, like, a half hour-ish before we landed, and this guy was like, oh, hey, do you, uh, do you want anything to drink because you're sleeping the whole time? And I'm like, no, I'm good. So anyways, guys, uh, that's been that's my first first episode of my Euro trip. I want to talk about Poland next. Um, I appreciate you guys listening. Thanks for watching. Sorry it was a long commentary. Sorry it was a long video. I'll probably shorten these up from here on out. But uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for su subscribing. And I'll talk to you later.
Yeah. <laughs>